drop, gonna drop. Uh, a lot of interviews, right? Bring up your brother, Hector Macho Camacho. Okay. But not yes, much sir. detail is to ever discussed about things. So is he your half brother mm -hmm. on your father's side or? We are brothers from the get half brother. Yes. And, um, you know, we, we went through a lot of shit together, man. Macho and I went through a lot of shit together. I miss him. I miss him dearly. You know, the way he went was wrong. Um, he had a lot of issues in his life. You know, we, we, we were distant for a little bit, not for any other godly reasons. It's just like he was doing his thing, I was doing my thing. He was a boss, I was an actor. We all came up at the same time in our primes. And, you know, everywhere we went, he looked for me, I looked for him. And maybe he was like, that's my brother. People would say, shit, no, that's not your brother. That's my brother. That's my father. And they went, who's your father? Like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> shit like that. But, um, yeah, man, you, you know, Sometimes it's hard to talk about him in the sense that, you know, all the shit that we went through and, and um, the life he led was a lot different from mine. Although there was some a lot of similarities, but he was a, he was a crazy man. You know, he was, he was a wildcat. He was a gypsy. He was a good heart. He, he was a good soul. He was a good soul. Not too many people like that, that that I had known in my whole life. You know, people used to talk about him. Oh, he's a fucking show off. And this and that. that was his career. That was his showmanship. You know, Ali did it. I do it as an actor, you know. If it wasn't for those 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 things that he did when he pulled up, you know, that's what made him who was. But deep down inside, that was all a show. He was a good, kind-hearted Cuban man. I think Cuban knew him a couple times. My nephew to this day, Junior, always calls me. Hector Junior says, "Yo, I was just thinking about the shit about you and Pop, blah blah blah." And he's like my son. He calls me all the time. He says, "Yo, I don't got Papi here, but I got you." You know, the same thing. I said, "I appreciate that." You know, my sisters in New York, my my half sisters over there, you know, Muñeca, Treya, Steli, all of the you know. The, you know, it, I guess, you know, I, I embody his spirit to them. You know, I embody a lot of much, you know, me and Macho, two of the same in different ways sometimes, you know. What was your relationship like growing up? Like you guys were really close despite you not having? We were tight. We were, we were tight. We were tight, you know. But like I said, when, when he was in his prime, I was in my prime. That's when the best shit happened, you know, because we were both doing our own shit. And I would go to his fights and he would come to my sets and probably blind people didn't realize that we were brothers. We didn't say much a lot to people, you know. And um, we we had a really really good relationship, man. You know, nigga lived with me for years. I lived with him. He came here. You know, him and my wife were fucking like brother and sister. They loved the shit I showed. He loved my kids. I loved his kids to this day. His ex wife Amy, great crazy lady too. But you know, we match and I were anywhere you would, you would see match in those days. You would see me everywhere you would see me. You would see match along with you know Frankie Ruiz, who was a salsa singer. God bless his soul. Hector Lavo as well. You know, we came up with some crazy motherfuckers. You know, and the fact, you know, the drugs were prevalent at the time. You know, yeah, I did my share of coke. Yeah, he did his share of coke, all that shit, you know. But that's neither here nor there. That didn't define who we were. Those were just things that happened to be in the mix at the time, you know. You know, at the end, at the end of his career when he retired, you know, after all the punches and all that shit, his head was hurting so much that the cocaine became more of a medicinal thing than a habit. You know, it, it would stop his headaches. You know, he would think clearer, which was crazy because he would think it was the opposite. All the music of partying was different. You know, you party, you party. Now, at this point in your life, you know, you punch drunk in a sense, not punch drunk. You know, he's 51, 52 before he died, you know? Let me... So, but we had a very close relationship. Let me very ask close. you this. Do you think that, like, mm -hmm. you know how, like, uh, football players, they get, like, CTE? Do you think that that happened mm -hmm. to him from from the boxing, like something along those lines? Oh yeah, I'm 100 percent sure. I'm 100 percent sure a lot of that happened. A lot of that happened. Those times he, he couldn't remember shit. He let me tell you, he had a hell of a memory. At the end, like his speech, he would talk to you, and it was like he knew what he was saying, but it took him longer to say it. And I already knew because I know my brother. I know exactly what he's gonna say when he's gonna. Even my wife had to the point where she's like, "How the fuck you understand what he's saying?" I know he talks you like, and I knew what he was saying. And it was all that, you know, the 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 the, the brain, the, the concussions, you know, the, the brain, you know, they say when you sneeze one time, you you lose a shitload of brain cells. Imagine getting punched. Not only in the fighting, in sparring, in jogging, all that shit. It took its toll. It took it, and and that's, of course the drugs as well. But you know, I'm not making excuses. But um, yeah, a lot of it had to do with you know all the punishment. What was that physical? Was that? Huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. The physical and the chemical punishment. He he, he you know. Took upon himself. 
what was that like for you to watch the struggles that he had like towards the end of his life? It was hard, man. That's why I told him, come stay with me. So he lived with me here for like a couple months, like almost half a year. You know, on and off. He was doing his shit. You know, he, he would go up and down and wait. You know, uh, and I could see him struggling and shit. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, oh, my, come they suck this dick, basically. Oh, my come blah, blah, blah. But then those same people, I turned around, I was with my wife one time, and some of people, oh, yeah, he's a fucking junkie, blah, blah. And I turned around and said, man, you fucking full of shit. Today he's here, you fucking sucking the dick, and tomorrow you fucking talking shit. And he, he took a lot of that shit in. You know, he, he was a humble dude. He, he listened to a lot of people talk shit. But you know what? He, he, he wiped his ass with it. But I know that deep down inside, he was like, damn, bro, that's fucked up. Yeah. You know? And I just talked to him about this. Say, you're much, you know, man, fuck that shit. Like, what happened to this guy? He, I said, he used to tell me, you remember this? I go, yeah, but where's he now? He's locked up, blah, blah, blah. I talk to him. I said, yeah, you know why? Because when you were in your prime, when you were fucking winning, everybody was on your shit. Macho, give me tickets. Oh, they want to be around you. Why? Because your money, because of the coke, because of the chick. Because you were macho macho. Now you're not fucking fighting no more. Where the fuck they at? Where they at? You know? And so and I know so, he str- I know he struggled in, inside, and that was one of the reasons, you know. He was, a, he was a smart, very smart, smart man, despite all that shit. He kept a lot of his his his, his hurt deep inside. Not too many people saw that, you know. Not even his ex-wife at times. Or some of his sisters and, and me, you know, there was a lot of shit that I didn't see, but I do later. And we would talk about it. I said, blah, 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 blah. He's like, nah, I'm good, you know. Fucking people, you know. At times he cried with me, you know. And times I said, right in this room where I'm at, my office, him and my wife and me would sit here, we cry. All three of us just talking shit. And your brother, he ended up getting shot in Puerto Rico, right, while he was sitting in the car with his friend? Yeah, he got it. Yeah, it's like, wrong place, wrong time. Um, There's different conf- conflicting stories about that, but... um. Stuff that, you know, I, I don't go into too too much with a lot of people or in public, you know, down the line when you and I would talk and I could tell you certain things that right. should that are deep. But um yeah, he didn't know it was coming. He didn't see it coming. He got shot in the neck, he was sitting in the passenger side. He was probably texting me because he had called me that day five times. And I was coming, I was living in LA at the time with my wife and my daughter, and we were driving, it was a Thanksgiving week, and we we're gonna drive back from LA to Tampa, spend Thanksgiving with the family here. My sister knows and all that shit. And um, I got a call in between while we were driving through Texas that something had happened, but I had spoken to him like four or five times. And I could tell, I told my wife, there's something wrong with my because he called me every day and, and they'd be like, yo, what's up? You good? He goes, yeah, you good? Okay, cool. What you doing now? What you doing? Cool. And I said, yo, me, me, me and my, me, come on, I might go there this weekend. He goes, fat, come. But then I said, you all right? He goes, yeah. And then he started, he talked for a little longer than normal. It was always quick talks like that. But he would try to keep me on the phone. I'm like, yo, nigga, I'm trying to get the fuck out. I'll call you back. So when they when it happened to him, he was on the thing, found him with his head down and his phone in his hand like so. Bullet came through the driver's side. The pilot hit him on the side of the face, took his teeth out, went through his jaw, around his neck, got the karate, and then he got stuck in the spine. So he didn't feel it. He didn't see it. To me, you know, he pretty much bled out by the time they took him to the hospital. They put him on, on respiratory shit. I'm on this fucking, damn, this fucking... They had him on life support for a little while, and uh, after a couple of days, you know, it was it. That was it. Yeah, because uh, I think it's they said that uh, he had a heart attack and he became brain dead at, at at some point. No, he was brain dead already. He was brain oh, dead okay. before the heart attack. The heart. What happened was when they, when they took the, the when they took the, the the plug out. That's when he had the heart. The heart stopped. He was living on machines. He was living on machines. I the last couple of days he was living off of the machine. So when they unplugged the machine, the heart stopped. I can't imagine what that was like for you to receive that news because in interviews I've seen you say that. Well, I was there. I was, I was in Puerto Rico when, when he passed. Oh. I was in Puerto Rico the day after he got shot. Me and my wife fucking flew to Puerto Rico like that. I was with him two days. I was there the day, the day they took him to the hospital, the day after. I looked at him and the doctor told him, you can't open this, this and that. I closed the fucking curtain. I told my chief, I told, my, I told Maria, his mom said, everybody get the fuck out. And they were like, cool. I, I want the time with my brother. I looked. He just got a haircut. I looked in his ear and I could see all the hair. Like, and then I pulled the thing open, and um, I pulled I pulled this thing open, and, and I saw the shit. I was like, "Fuck!" But yeah, I was there till the moment he died. I was there, we were in the hospital when the plug was pulled. We were at the house, and they called us, and they told us, you know, he's gone. And that was something that's another personal thing that we'll get into at some other time. But um, 
Yeah, they, I'll put it this way. He, if they hadn't have done that, he'd, still be, he'd be a vegetable right now. And that's not the way my brother wanted to be. He was a fighter. We let him fight till he couldn't fight no more. Right. And I, I know that in, in past interviews, you you he fought fifteen rounds that he fought fifteen rounds that weekend, brother. He fought fifteen rounds to stay alive. <laughs> ah, sorry, man. No, no, it's it's understandable, man. Because I've seen in past interviews, you you said that he was your hero. Yeah, my hero, man. It was my big brother, my big brother, my big brother. I miss talking to him. 